Hi, I'm Becca and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make these multi-swirl canes just basically from using a normal jelly roll or a swirl cane. Um, these are the ones I'm going to show you today um, and they're a little bit darker than I expected them to work, come out with. And um, These are the practice ones that I did before. So um, I'll say at the beginning, I say in the uh, video that um, I've put the orange in there so that it separates them but I found the more I reduce it down the darker it's gotten it sort of drowned it out so the green and the blue must be must be you know as a stronger color when you're reducing it down so I'll tell you that now so when it comes into it and I'll say the orange will uh, divide it out you need something a little bit brighter and lighter if you're using the same sort of colorways as what I am and then these are the ones that I did when I was uh, practicing for the uh, tutorial they're easy to do it's just basically making a gel jelly roll cane if you've made one of those so um let's get to it and i'll show you how right so to uh, make all of the uh, swirl canes we're just going to have to do one simple jelly roll swirl whatever you want to call it it's uh, got different names but i've just got three highly contrasting colors um uh, mainly because so that you can see what i'm doing but it's so that when it's reduced down you get that definition because if you have colours that are too close together when you reduce it down that they can go muddy so they've got to have a, a good contrast between them all from when you're reducing them down so I've already conditioned my clay and you need it quite soft for you to do your initial jelly roll because obviously you're turning it into a, a cylinder and it might crack and things so all you need to do is just basically deciding what colour order you're going to have your uh, clay and I think I'll go with green on the bottom now if you've got a mat like mine that's got grid works on it now you might want to do it like I'm doing now precise or you might just want to eyeball it that's totally up to you but the way I like to do it with this one <coughs> I like to stagger them so a little bit better, uh, about half an inch downwards so just laying it over the top And then take my last colour. Now you can use more than three colours. This is just what I've chosen to do. Okay. So that's our base done. And then what I like to do is before I try rolling it, you know, like into the actual roll, I like to thin out the ends. So I just take my roller and just roll those end pieces this is just so for starting and finishing it off and if it squidges out of your lines if you've uh, gone with them straight or you've just eyeballed it then you can just squeeze them back in Whoop. and see they drain out a bit of clay already but don't worry about that because that will come on out I'm just going to do the other side doing that I'm just thinning it out it's just so that it's easier to uh, set the cane off yeah right I'll turn it this way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it up on itself so I'm going to have the uh, blue facing upwards and then the green will be on the outside so sorry I'll have to do it that way I find it easiest so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start curling up the edge of the green and we're just going to be rolling it onto itself so this is why you need your clay fairly well conditioned. I did mine this morning and it's only a few hours later and it's uh, already starting to go a little bit harder than it was when I finished. But um, this is the uh, Fimo uh, professional uh, clay that you get in the big blocks. Uh, it's it's really good clay, there's really nice colours but it's awful to condition, it takes ages. Um, so uh, if you have problems with your hands um, you might want to uh, put some liquid clay in with it to uh, soften it off or uh, just stick with the uh, female soft uh, rather than uh, going for the uh, professional big box because the big box are good for if you're doing a lot of the same thing or um, you want to mix up your own colours it's just that it's a little bit harder uh, than re the rest of the clay uh, that's on the market so I'm doing it slowly just so that I can try and uh, avoid getting too many cracks because I'm getting 
cracks now but when you get to one you can just smooth it out with your finger but the more we reduce the cane you're not going to see them but then let's see if you get a big one like that you just want to stretch it and pop it back together oh the ends come off there but never mind you want to try and uh, squish out as much air as you can while you're putting the cane together because then that will get, get you the least amount of um, wastage. I'll get my words out then. Now, if you can't feel uh, sort of stretching the crack, if you take any leftover bits of clay, you can sort of just fill in where it's split a little bit. But the more you work it, the more that the clay will go together. I'm using so much clay because I'm wanting to make uh, all of the five canes with the same blend. Now, if you're just wanting to do one of them, you can start with a much smaller cane. Or amount of clay, should I say. See, and this is the uh, problem with the professional clay. Oh, the female professional, should I say. It's not, I'm not calling myself a professional because I'm far from it. But it's just a little bit harder to use. If I'd have thought this through, and <laughs> I was getting my clay ready, I would have actually even get chosen uh, to use the, the female stuff. But we're here now and uh, this is what I'm using. So I'm going to get all this rolled up because it's taking me a while. Uh, so I might have to soften it off a little bit more. So once I've got it rolled up, I'll come back. Right, got there in the end. It uh, cooperated with me eventually. So as you can see, there's still some crackings in it. But when we reduce it down, those are going to get blended in. And you're not going to be able to tell the difference anyway. So when I've just got to the end, I've left the three colours staggered the way that we did at the beginning. So I'm just going to start to reduce this now. And I'm going to chop it into uh, three sections uh, so that we can do uh, the different types of canes. So whenever you would work working with a sort of a log cane, you need to squish out from the centre outwards because the inside of the cane reduces less than the outside bit. So you want to make sure that it's all at the same um, thickness as you're going out just to try and avoid... Um, too much wastage so at the minute it looks rather ugly and you can't see the proper swirl in it but once I cut into it you'll uh, see um, you know the nice swirl that we're looking for so I'm going to continue doing this until I've got it to a bit wider size for me to be able to chop it into three sections and I'll be back right, I've got this to just over a little uh, over than uh, six inches so I'm just going to slice up the end so that we can see uh, the prop full swirl before we carry on. As you can see, we're getting there. I just need to slice a little bit more. Now, if there's any imperfections from your cracking, don't worry about it because the more you reduce it, the less that you're going to be able to see those uh, sort of like staggered parts of the cane. So, as you can see there, that's just been where a little bit where I've had to fill it in when I was rolling it up you'll barely be able to know to say once you finish the uh, cane. So let's just make sure that's out to six. Yep. So I'm going to chop these into two inch sections. There we go. So I'll go with this one to start with. So that is basically the first cane. So when I was working out the um, plan for doing this video, that's basically just this one. And we see it very well. Um, there you go. You can see it better in person. Uh, but as you can see, that's just that would be your first cane. So, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce this down so it's into smaller sections like I have done here so I'm going to reduce it some more and I'll pop back once I've got it to the right thickness that I want for uh, the cane. Right so I've got it reduced like I said you can barely see 
those uh, imperfections within the cane because it's getting so small now. So I've extended this out or reduced it out, that's the proper term for it. And I've uh, cut off the end so I know I've got some uh, nice clean ends and I've got it to about nine inches. So for the actual cane that we're going to make, we want eight sections and then I'm wanting just to keep uh, one section just like I've done here, uh, so as one separate cane. So chop one off first for the one that we're going to keep. So that's our first cane. And then I'm going to chop it into one inch sections to uh, make up the other cane. So we've got our sections now. So I like to get so all the swirls are facing the same direction. So you need one for your centre. So I'll just pick. So I'm in a little bit better than you can, might be able to see. So we're having one in the section at uh, centre, and then we're just going to um, put, like go all the way around the edge with all these swirls. So the easiest way I find of doing it. Just line them all up so that they're facing the same way before you start popping any of them round. So I'll pop that one. There we go. Right, so this is going to be a centre one. And then I'm going to just pop these going round. Just keeping spirals facing the same way. It's hard to do it up in the air but if any sections have got cut a little bit smaller than the rest just, just tease them out so that they're the same as the rest. And just keep going around. See, there's just a few little gaps, but just make sure that it's all lined up. Same on the other side. Make sure that they're all facing the same way. If you don't mind them facing opposite ways, then don't worry about it. Me, I just wanted them all to be facing the same way. Okay, so now you've got it all uh, in position where you want it to go. It's just a case of reducing it and getting rid of those air pockets that's going around the centre piece. Now the centre swirl will reduce a lot less than what the rest of them were. You can see the colours a little bit more I think there now. And we're just going to squish these out. Technical term, squish. There we go give it a little roll. You don't want to be tempted to just keep doing this with it because it can distort the cane but when you've done like a little bit of this and one quick roll of that's not going to uh, do any damage. So I'll just chop this bumpy end off. And then that's our first cane. So that's how it swirls. Okay so uh, I've already filmed the process of making this came but the camera cut out and what was there was blurry so I'm having to redo it. So I'm doing it in slightly different colours so if you're wondering why I've suddenly like, got a different cane that's why. Um, but it's good turned out to be a good thing in the end anyway because I can show you the difference between the brightness within the swirls. Um, my logic behind the uh, swirls and putting the orange in it I thought it wouldn't blend in with the uh, green and blue as much as it has done because I thought with yellow it's just going to blend into another green. Um, so I thought they'd, the orange might be a little bit um, of a stronger colour so it would stand out. But the more I've reduced it down into the tiny little bits that I've put around the outside you can't really see the orange very well. So rather than making another cane uh, that I'm not going to be fully happy with I've gone to changing the orange to a white. So. Um, you can see the difference between the swirls. I've not fully reduced it down 
but you can already see from this size to that one it stands out a lot to, more than what the orange did. The orange is fine once it's in a larger size but I'm not going to be able to reduce this down too much or so I'm not going to be able to see the little swirls on the outside uh, like I'd like them to be. So on this one I can see the swirls properly on it. It's not focusing very well on terrible women camera work as you can tell from me having to refill. Um, so I'm just going to get on with this one. So like I said, I've gone with the, just white instead of the orange uh, in between the green and the uh, blue. So what we're needing to do now is we need to break this down into one larger um, piece for the centre and slightly smaller for these outside and then a lot smaller for the ones on the outside to fill in the little gaps. So I've already got this down to about, about not about, <laughs> that's my Yorkshire coming out, uh, about 8 inches. Um, so I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller just so that uh, I've got plenty of uh, cane to be going on and I managed to pick up some godly from the other one as well but nothing wrong with that so just decide on how big you want your centrepiece to be because the centre one like I probably said when I was doing the other one um, reduces a lot less than what the outside ones does so um you just want to uh, keep that in mind for when you're deciding on uh, how big you want your centre spiral to be opposed to the other ones. So there we go in there. So I want it around about the same sort of size as probably this one. Yeah, so we're about there with that one. So that's probably it's about a half an inch wide this cane now. So I'm going to cut off. Uh, let's go for. Go for a three, uh, two inch section, I think. No, go with three. Sorry, sorry, I'm procrastinating. Right, so I've got a two. So that's going to be our centre one. And then what I've done is I've got uh, seven other spirals going around the outside of it. So I need to reduce this down now so it's smaller than the main one. But I need to have enough left to be able to reduce it again. So I'm going to reduce this down just a little and then I'll pop back because you don't need to see me doing all of that. You've seen me reducing already. So I'll be back in a second and we'll go with the next step. Right, so I've got this reduced down. So as you can see, this one's a lot smaller than the uh, centre spiral. And I've got it well over 14 inches, which is what I'm going to need for um, sections to get seven going around. And then I need a bit to uh, be left over uh, to reduce again for the uh, smaller bits. So I'm just going to chop this into um, two inch sections. It doesn't have to be two inch, this is just what I've decided to go for. If you don't want to uh, make as big as a cane as what I'm doing, then you can make it smaller. I just thought it would make it uh, easier for you to see what I'm doing if I do it on a bigger uh, scale. That's the beauty of one of these mats is because it can help you when you're cutting out all your uh, sections and everything. So, but if you haven't got a class one, like I said, you can uh, just use uh, a glass chopping board or make your own from uh, just laminating some graph paper, really. So, I'm just going to do my really trying to get the spiral so that they're all going the same way. That one's just gone a little bit too thick at the end. That's fine. I think it was just the end bit where I was right a little bit thicker. So I'm just making out my... That one's gone a lot shorter. Never mind. So if any is too long, too short, don't worry about it. Just make them work. It's not going to be able to see much difference when we're going round. So I've got a large one and go, I think it's that way around. Yeah. So I'm just making sure that they're all going the same way, that they're all the same sort of thickness as what um, the rest of them are, so they're all equal. 
if they're not equal again it doesn't really matter that big of a deal because when you reduce it down you're not going to see the uh, teeny tiny difference between them so which way around have we got that one going that way so if you've got them uh, going in a different direction just flip them and you'll get them right the right way and when I'm looking at monitor and trying to cut at the same time it's not a, a good thing because I end up cutting some smaller some larger it's uh, the problem with trying to look in the screen at the same time is when you're filming. There we go. Right, so we're all the right way now. So what I'm going to do is, like I did with the other one, I'm just going to start by just pla whoop, placing it where the colours start to change on the centre one. I'm just going to keep doing the same all the way around. A little bit too thick again. Yeah. I like the right way around. And like this, I've got some excess coming off the other side. Then chop that off. And then I've got some either for scraps or a tiny cane on its own for me to use. I think I've got them flipped these. I have. Just leave a little gap in between them. Don't have to put right up to the edge. Oop. Make sure your ends meet up. Okay, so I've got them all in the right position now. I'm going to chop off these little bits and then I'm just going to push these in together. Now if you didn't want to have the gaps you could just reduce your centre one a little bit more but it's not going to be able to really see much difference anyway. So. Okay, so I'll just squish them in there. that's closed up and you get the little gaps that's there. So I'm just going to reduce this down so it's even smaller than these little uh, spirals here and then we're going to put them in between it just to fill in the gaps. So I'll go reduce this one and I'll be back. Okay so I've got it reduced down and cut into two inch sections so you can see the size difference in between them now. So I'm just going to pop these just in the gaps in between at the ones that we've just put on before. Now you could keep uh, going with this idea and just keep adding more and more rounds of your uh, swirl. To do that you probably just want to start off with a lot bigger cane in the centre and work your way down to this because if you go any smaller than sort of this size you'll not see the um, spirals very well at all. So if you do want to go bigger, just have a start with a bigger centre piece and then just work your way down from there. You don't even have to keep them all in the same colour where you could uh, just put all different colours in. That might actually end up. Yeah, I might have to do that idea now I've thought of it. <laughs> so right all the way down and in between. Scrap rolling away. So I've just got the uh, pieces in there, I've got them at the end, and it's just a case of moulding those into that gap in between the, t the uh, large canes. Okay. 
I like to keep flipping it and make sure that I'm uh, putting in the same pressure on each side so that I'm not making one larger than, uh, than the other. And once you've got them squishing all the air pockets gone, it should go into more of a cylind cylindrical shape. And you'll not have these uh, bumps on the outside. If you like the bumps, keep the bumps. This is just what I wanted to do. Make it a quick roll, just to even it out a little. Okay, so I've got the uh, air pockets squished out. Let's just give it a slice. I want a clean slice. There you go. And because of the lighting, let's see if I can might be able to see a little bit now, it's not so bright now, but you can see the white in it, the camera's not picking it up as well as uh, as what you can see uh, in person. So but you can see with this one, this one you definitely can see the uh, whites because it's a little bit larger. Again, it might be just the fact that I've got two dominant colours either side of it and white's not showing up. Um but yeah, so I'll get on to uh, the next part of the game, which I'll go back to the original colour that filmed okay. <laughs> so I'll see you in a minute. And then the next one we're going to make is turning them into triangles. So we need to take our last section and we're going to reduce this down again. And for this one we need six sections, but I want to reduce it to seven so that I've got another cane here. Um, so I've got another shape that I can use for something else. So I'll reduce this and I'll be back in a second. Right, so I've got it reduced <coughs> a bit. Now we're going to turn it into our triangle shape. So on this one I decided to start pinching up at... It's probably easy to see here. You know where all the uh, three colours meet? So that was the first point that I did when I was making the practice ones. You just want to pinch it all the way along. Reason I, did, I think the reason that I did this was just to make sure that I knew that I was going down in a straight line and I, and I wasn't uh, twisting or distorting the cane at all. So then I'm just going to roll it onto its side and then I'm going to pinch again. So that's going to give us our second side of the triangle. And same again. I just pinch it. And then you just want to straighten out your edges. Okay, so we've got our triangle there. So I'll just clean up those edges a little. For the biggest cane we need six sections and for we just want a section so that we've got a different one left over so we want it to be at least seven inches or I want it to be seven inches just so that I can divide it up easily so I've got that going on to about nine inches so I'm going to cut one inch section so I've got a nice two inch section left over for me to uh, do different things with, with the cane. So we've got our six, and then we've got this one that we can do something else with, so that's another cane. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the colours, uh, you know, where the first point that I um, pinched together, I'm going to have that in the centre. But I want to make sure that I've got my swirls all facing the same way, so that one's not quite right. Do it this way then I know that they're all going to be going right. Oh, 
Right, so in this one, when I was putting it together, there's a, a little section in the centre, a uh, sort of little gap. And I filled this in with white. On this one, I'm going to just fill it in with a little bit of the orange, just so that I've got a brighter thing in, in the centre. Because um, when I first did this one, I, you know, it was, it was going to be like a, a flower cane. Uh, but I thought, I don't want to put too much of a pattern of the uh, centrepiece in because there's quite a lot of pattern going on already in it. Um, as I've been reducing this, and um, I'm thinking now that I could have done with actually getting some white in here or something, um, because the orange seems to be getting drowned out by the the green and the blue, which I didn't think would actually do it, but live and learn. So I'm just going to keep that ready from what I'm doing. So I'm just going to pop them in to a circular position. So just turn your cane round each time you add in one. Okay. So make sure you've got them all lined up here. And before you put your last one in, you just insert whatever colour you're putting in there. And then put our last one in. So again, we're just going to press all those air pockets out and reduce it down a bit. Now, whenever you're doing canes, don't reduce them down too small unless you're using them straight away. Um, you're best off leaving canes rather large so that you can uh, wake the clay back up again. So say if you're just making canes for, to put into storage, which I do a lot of, uh, I tend to leave my canes larger just so that they uh, have got space for me to be able to wake them up when I want to use them again. So I've got all the uh, pockets one out from the centre. Now I'll just go and chop the end off. I want a quick clean cut there. There's our last cane. So it's a bit like a, a flower cane, this one, but you've got your swirls in it. Um, but looking at it now in hindsight, I wish I'd have put a, a white in there instead of the orange. It might have made it pop a little bit more. So I put the white in this one. I didn't want to be repeating myself, but I think the white's done a really good job of actually standing out with it. So when you're doing your colours, just make sure you have got that sort of quite bright starkness to it. I thought the orange would actually yeah, pop out more than that it does. But like I said, I'd rather you see this the, and uh, me get it wrong than, uh, you know, you're wasting your clay. Um, it's still usable, it's just that it's a little bit darker than I expected it to be. Um, so I am happy with those ones anyway, so I'll bring all the canes in now. So, not that one. So these are the triangle ones that I've made. So we've got our two uh, individual ones and the two flower spirals. And then we've got our two, uh, the ones with the really teeny tiny ones on the outside. So now a bit of, got more space then. And then we've got our first ones that we made. And then we've just got the basic jelly roll, which is just the basis for all of these canes. Pop them that way around, got them and you can see them better. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, it's been helpful for you uh, to inspire you to have a go at making these yourself. Um, if you've liked the video you could give me a thumbs up. If you've not subscribed consider subscribing that'd be appreciated and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.